Hi everyone, my name is Kevin Blum. I'm a senior designer at All Things Media. I'm here to show you a short demo of the Tilt Brush app on the Vive. And I guess, let's get into it. So first off, a little bit about Tilt. Uh, it's a brush, it's a painting program in 3D, virtual reality, developed by uh, Google. And it's a rather simple app when you really consider all that it does, but it does it very well. Um, it provides you an array of brushes. So for example, light, something that you can't do um, in a normal medium, like painting on canvas. And then it does other things that are a little more matte. And it gives you animated options as well, like fire. And so those are just a few of the kinds of brushes that they give. Um, and there are other, a few other simple uh, options, such as an eyedropper, just in case you want to grab a brush you previously used, a uh, straight edge if you want to draw straight lines, and, of course, an eraser. A good place to start would be, in my opinion, would be to draft out what you have in mind. I think that when it comes to even like a 2D drawing, you want to kind of figure out exactly where you're going to uh, position your drawing in the space that you have. And in a 3D environment, it's twice as difficult. You have more space to have to consider. So I think it's a really a good idea to at least loosely kind of figure what you need. And so I like going with the velvet brush because it's a very whimsical brush. Oop, straight edge is still on. And going with a color that is very very mild compared to the environment that you're in, so you don't have to worry about erasing it. I have a general shape in mind, and I'm just kind of drafting that out. I'll fill in the gaps um, later with the actual brushes. I'm not too concerned with uh, making that too nice. One thing I was messing with earlier, on a previous moment of like playing with this thing, was the mirror. It's kind of cool. You see a reflection of whatever you're drawing with respect to like this, the uh, axis that the mirror is placed at. So kind of wanted to play with that. I thought there were some unique opportunities available with that thing. So it's kind of weird like, being able to move your body and have that adjust your positioning. I guess it won't let me do it completely flat. It snaps back. So we're just going to have a slight angle to it. It doesn't matter. All right, so I guess. Let's start painting around this thing. You can change the size of the brush by simply swiping the touchpad on the right. And so, going with a, a wide brush to try to finish off as much as possible, as quickly as possible. I think with uh, Tilt, the style that you develop with painting, I mean, just like anything else, I think there's a style you'll develop using this thing, it needs to be considerably more gestural than you would want to be able to do with something that gives you more control. There's a lot of control you can have with this. I mean, movement in a 3D space is pretty natural, but it's still a little bit limiting. That just kind of helps you to work on your creative creativity, trying to come up with your creative solutions to figuring out what it is you actually want to realize. Not sold on those last brushes. Back to where I was. You saw that eraser. That was pretty, it basically sucks up everything that is in that space and that sphere that it showed, um, which may end up taking up more brushes, more brush strokes than you meant for it to do, but it's if you undo it, it undoes it one step at a time, I found, so you don't have to worry about the fact that it might over erase. So what I have planned for the mirror down here is that I was thinking, you know, a lot of people use it to make a symmetrical object of some kind, like a robot or a monster or whatever. But 
one of the things I think is most naturally occurring is a reflective surface like on water. So I kind of wanted to play with that. Another cool thing is you can actually draw on the opposite side of it and it will pick it up. All right, so I kind of want these to go out a little bit further. All right, so I had a couple other things in mind rather than just this trunk. I wanted to do something cute also. Let's see if it comes out okay. Fair warning, I haven't drawn that much over the years as of late. I used to draw a lot more when I was little, but I haven't as much as of late. It's kind of weird trying to come up with uh, how you want to achieve with this specific angle to the brush. It takes a little bit of practice. It's actually surprisingly easy to really tell the depth of it. Thanks to the sensors on the outside of the Vive, it really picks up very accurately how deep you want to make your brush strokes. There we go. <laughs> and I want a fluffy tail. What can do that? Sweater? Let's try that out. Kinda. Ah, we're just gonna go with that. I need feet. Okay, so I have a little bunny. And what else do I want to do? I think I want some flowers in here. I thought that would be kind of cool, but I want to change up the color a little bit. Make starting to seem all kind of purplish, even though that's the kind of vibe I want to go for. And so, what was it, like this? There we go. A lot less stressful doing it that way. And then some variety. Hmm. Let's go back to what color that was. And slightly adjust it and do one more level. I guess that was just in the shade, it looked similar. Let's see. Another thing I wanted to do was add some foliage of some kind. Let's go with. So I seriously need some more yellow in this of some kind. Maybe like that? Yeah. All right. So maybe we have some leaves going on in here. All right, and I wanna add, let's go back to that splatter. I wanna add some, some flowers. I'm fond of cherry blossoms. So I wanna add some of that in here. That kinda achieves it. One of the fun things about this app is that while it provides you a lot of different brushes, the options are still kind of limited. So it get, makes you, forces you to get a little bit more creative with it. But that's part of the fun. It's another cool th thing about working in 3D is all you do is move to another position and it just changes your entire perception of whatever it is you are creating. That's something you gotta keep doing is as you work on this thing, 
keep changing where you are, keep changing how you're looking at it, because when you're thinking in 2D, when you're just looking at it from one direction, there are things that slip by you. So there was one more thing I wanted to do that was a little bit crazier. I said I like the light brush, but I haven't really been using it. So now is a good chance to do that. I'm gonna do something a little bit crazier. Let's see. All right. Let's see. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, hell. Let's just draw with the light. And we're going with. Let's go with that. Ah, oh, that's cool. All right. Hmm. can't hesitate with this. You just kind of have to commit. Where's the highlighter? There it is. There we go. A little brighter. Ah, see, now that's cool. All right, so I'm going to try that out to fill in the space here. All right, so now I've got to make the rest of this. I think I'm just going to go ahead and do it in parts. That's just going to be a lot easier to manage. All right, and I think I want to give this thing wings of some sort. And we're going to go back to that highlighter. You got to really be aware of the directionality of your strokes. Because all the it's almost impossible to line up everything, you can't try to close up things very easily. You got to expect that your strokes are going to come through. So it's a matter of, it's kind of like this exercise in trying to make the most out of as little as possible. Okay, and I think I want to give these little flowers something cool. Whoa, look at that. Now, I was saying I wanted this to look like water, but it doesn't quite. It just looks like a massive heap of everything I just did. So let's see what can I do about that. Let's go back to that velvet. Velvet was really cool. Yeah. And let's try this. I'm gonna give the illusion of ripples with the strokes. See if how much I can do with as little as possible. The reason why I'm doing with opaque strokes for the water right now is because um, while it is supposed to be reflective, I want hints of it. I still want to establish a surface. Was my thinking anyway. I like my petals, so let's make the petals look like they're falling. Thought this would do it. Snow. Kind of looks like it. As long as it's low enough. And let's go with the embers using, let's see, brush select, velvet ink color, embers. Let's start low. Actually, and 
Let's go with the stars. Let's give our dragon creature some life. Let's make it glowy eyes so that it seems magical of some, I guess. Oh, actually looks kind of evil. <laughs> this bunny's going to mess this dragon up. <laughs> All right. I guess um I guess I'll finish it off with just a little bit of smoke just to give it some mysticism, I suppose. Still the general color tone of the space, as big as possible, because I'm lazy. That'll help blend out some of that bottom area. Well. This has been our demo on the tilt brush with the Vive. Hope you liked what you saw. Please subscribe. Thanks for watching.